Hello people, this is an air conditioner. It goes in your window. I'm gonna tell you a couple of things that I've seen not on my, not just on my channel, but on other people's channels. And just modern, like, I, I wouldn't, I don't know if I would say conspiracy, but like this thing that everyone's got against like vintage units and all about the modern units. And some of this stuff should be pretty obvious, but apparently isn't. Excuse background noise, I am in the attic. And there's a lot of fans running up here because it's very hot. But, this is the only air conditioner here that isn't running. And that actually works. I guess we haven't... I guess it wouldn't really matter, I'm not turning it on today, but... I have another one over there. We'll, we'll look. Maybe we'll look at both of them. It's not. That's not the point, though. This is going to be a great visual aid for this. So, all right. I'm gonna try and get myself around this tripod. So, this is a very common. This is a very common window air conditioner that you can find at the store. Okay, whether it be like. Walmart or Walmart, you know, big big box stores, maybe Lowe's, Home Depot, uh, Target maybe. I don't know, I don't go to the I don't usually go to the store and get an air conditioner, usually I'll get them off of marketplace. But this is a window air conditioner. Um, there are three things you need to take note of. One is there's a coil underneath here. You know what, the other air conditioner would be a lot better. And the reason I say this is because the front can come open, we can see on the inside. This is much better. And before I go to where I left off, you kinda need a little bit, you kinda know, need to know a little bit about how air conditioning works. The way an air conditioner works is it takes its is it takes heat energy through this coil and it moves it to the coil on the back end and then and then blows it outside. It literally moves air from inside to outside. There are three key things that you want that you that we're going to talk about. This coil right here which is the evaporator. Right behind here a black cylinder which is a compressor and on the back here is the condenser coil and within these coils and compressor and all is refrigerant and the refrigerant will absorb the heat at least what's when it's on this side anyways when it's on the evaporator side I can't remember the whole physical properties thing about it. All you know is that it gets very cold. It doesn't have any heat energy on the side, which makes it very cold. The, the heat goes into it, and then it transfers it outside. Okay. A lot of people talk about... And here's one of the big things that we got to talk about. There's a couple of big things, one of which is... Uh, which one should we start with? There's a couple of big ones. One, one is the, they both kind of involve efficiency. Um, one of those is that the, the whole condensate thing. Uh, the condensate argument I hear so much. Now, I can't remember if this unit has a drain hole. This unit has been out of service for a long time. Right there, I don't know if you can see it, there is a drain hole. Do you guys know what water does? When it comes within prolonged contact with metal, 
If you said rust, you are correct. I'm gonna give you an example of rust. Excuse the horrendous noises coming out of this tripod. That is an example right there. Rust is pretty bad. Eventually, if there, when there's enough rust, it will create a hole. And this would be very bad should that hole be on a, a refrigerant line. Now, with copper, it's corrosion, not rust. It generally means the same thing, though. And it, it's just as damaging. Now, this unit has a drain plug for drain hole. Let me show you what happens when you have a drain hole and it's actually working. I don't see a whole lot of rust in there. Not seeing a whole lot of rust. When's this thing from? I don't know. Yeah, I don't see a manufacturer. This was probably in the tooth from the two thousands. Um and I've heard some some comments about the whole water slinging onto the condenser thing and while yes it can cool the condenser but something you have to note and and I think it was Walter Knox that I heard it from you need to be using cold water for it to actually cool it off you know you want to cool something off you have to use something cold Okay, that coldness is not just going to come from anywhere. Um, and, you know, when you put cold water into a teapot, what happens? The water gets hot. So, if there's a little bit of water, and, like, it's always cold, yes, that would actually work. Um... But when it's hot and the condenser gets pretty hot, um, that water comes into contact with the condenser, the compressor, all the hot components. It's not staying cold, especially if it's hot outside and the sun's beating on it. It's a, the water's not going to stay hot and it's going to be basically useless. It's just going to promote rust, corrosion, and also slow the fan down. So then you're going to get a little less subcooling as well on the condenser. So if your air conditioner doesn't have a drain hole, drill one. Unless it's new and you don't want to avoid the warranty, then take a like a paper towel and like jam it like in the very bottom of the side vent so it can act as a wick to drain the water out. Um and some people say that it cools the compressor. It really doesn't. It has nothing to do with the compressor. And it's not even... This isn't... It's not even... Gonna save you much money at all. It'll save you like a dollar or two. At best. Um, the other thing is power draw. Power draw... Amperage... I'm, I'm talking about amperage. Doesn't matter... Um, if the new units can't keep up with what they're supposed to be able to keep up with, it doesn't matter. Okay, 
I don't know if you guys remember my General Electric 5050 BTU, the one with the electronic controls. I used that in my old room. It was a very small room. It was well under 150 square feet. It was it was having a hard time keeping up on high and everything. It was running constantly. And it, it just couldn't keep up. That Amana unit, and it, it pulled like uh, four ish amps. Um, that Amana that I have, it full, it's an older one, pulls 5.2 amps. That thing could cool the entire downstairs of my mom's old place. And it's a pretty big downstairs. It's well over 550 square feet, which is what a 12 is rated for. So you would need, you would need at least an 18,000 to, 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 to cool it down. But that 5K was keeping up. I mean, it, it wasn't, well, I mean, it wasn't keeping up, but it was, uh, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it. It was, it kept it cool. It didn't keep it cold, but it was, it was cooler than it was outside. And that's pretty impressive. And the room that it's in right now, which is an adequate, an adequate size for it, it, it doesn't stay running all day. You know, like the General Electric was using was. So, the efficiency doesn't matter. <sighs> also, anybody. It doesn't even. What is this? Like. Also, recirculation, like if it comes out and goes right back in. Anybody who thinks it should do that, you need you need to let me just tell you, why would what would be the point of it coming out and then going right back in? I'll wait. Well, moving on. The next thing is the refrigerant type. There are a few different refrigerant types that are still in most air conditioners, whether it be 410A, 32, and if you're still using older units, 22, which is the best one. Um, a lot of people are talking about how R22 is bad for the environment. Oh, it's messing up the atmosphere. I made a video about this a while ago. That the refrigerant's not the problem. Because my question is... How is the refrigerant getting out of the unit? It shouldn't even be leaving the unit. So, if it's enclosed in a sealed system, how on earth is it hurting the environment? The only reason it would be out of the system is if, it's, if it's neglect. Neglect, lack of servicing, corrosion. And it all comes back to that again. So, I couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell you why people think this. And I have had a lot of fun recently watching some people's videos in particular. In particular, a guy named Jordan. He, his big unit, he was one of his big units went out on him and he got a replacement one like brand new replacement it's double the size of the old one but it cools less than half as much oh well yeah screw these new units I don't want to tell you guys you need to get your facts, you need to get your facts straight, okay, over and out.